Greetings, greetings, greetings. I'm Pastor Teddy Marshall of Word Fellowship Ministries. And I have a message, the Lord put it on my heart, so I prepared a message today that basically is, is just celebrating Jesus, celebrating Him. And the title of this message is, Jesus is Alive. So, many people are familiar with the, um, what this time of observance is for, that Jesus sent his son, Jesus, as a sacrifice to pay for um, the sins and satisfy the punishment for sin and offer eternal life with him, with God, through Jesus Christ to all people. It's not just a select few. It's not a particular denomination, none of that. Um, he sent Jesus for all people. The fulfillment of that sacrifice meant that he would endure extreme beating, humiliation, and death, all the things that sin causes, the cost of uh, the price for sin. And with that price being too high, for, for mere humans to satisfy it or to pay that price or to take the beating that Jesus had to endure for us, the Lord sent of himself through Jesus Christ, his son. Now, the prophet Isaiah, he foretold this. And let me read for you. Now, this message is scripture, is scripture heavy, but stick with me, okay? Isaiah 53. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. We, all, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him, Jesus, the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment and who, and who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken. And they made his grave with the wicked but with the rich at his death, because he had, no, he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his, when you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge... My righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Jesus made intercession for the transgressors, meaning he stepped in on our behalf and took the punishment that we were to have. He took the beating for us. He took, the, he took death for us. He gave his life for us. He interceded for us. He paid the penalty for us, for the price was too high for us to satisfy or to pay it ourselves. Now, Isaiah prophesied. Spoke it then, way, 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 thousands of years ago. He spoke it then and thousands of years before it actually happened. But it happened beforehand, as it is, as it was spoken, as God revealed it to Isaiah and he spoke it through, it was done. So fast forward to the New Testament telling of the finished work. Matthew chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. Stick with me now. <laughs> When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, Isaiah, the prophet saying he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. John chapter 20, and I'm going to start at verse 11. 
But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, because they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. Now, when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Who are you seeking? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabbani, which is to say teacher. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascended to my father and your father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. Amen. Done deal. Glory to God. Now let's fast forward to today. Jesus is alive. He is seated at the right hand of the father. He has, he has ascended still interceding for us through his great sacrifice of love his completed work. We who accept, receive, and confess him as personal Lord and Savior, we now have eternal life with the Father. We are the children of God. And as verse 50, Isaiah 53, 11, we are the labor of his soul. We born again believers in Christ Jesus are the fruit of that sacrifice. Jesus is alive. I cannot say it enough and I'll probably say it some more. He is risen and all the benefits, salvation, redemption, healing, deliverance, peace, and joy are intact, active, and available. We have victory of sin and death. We have victory over sin and death through Jesus Christ. We have all provision through Jesus. We have peace that passes all understanding through Jesus. We have the joy that is so great we cannot describe it. The joy of the Lord, which is our strength through Jesus. We have healing and divine health through Jesus. We have victory of, over every manner of fear, including torment, intimidation, um, let's see, uh, over evil, bad reports, fear tries to creep in. And let's see, over... Fear when there are questionable circumstances and situations through Jesus. We have victory over fear. We have victory over the enemy, Satan's plans, attacks, wiles, ambushes, and efforts. We have victory over those through Jesus Christ. This is the backstory of our observance for this time. This is why we celebrate and worship our risen Lord. The world is currently under extreme times and situations, but remember, Jesus is alive. And all the benefits of our salvation of him, by him are intact, active, and available to us, available to you. Make it personal. You know how I am. Make it personal, available to you. If you have not, or you desire to return, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or you desire to return to the Father, for whatever reason, you may have turned away from him, um, his, his love, just know this, his love invitation to you is still extended. He reaches out to you, opens up his arms when you come in, holds you tight, he's there. Make your confession of acknowledgement and acceptance of Jesus Christ today. Invite him into your heart. Repent of your sins. Ask the Father's forgiveness and decree Jesus to be the Lord of your life. Now, there are other things that you will have to do. There's discipleship involved where you'll have to learn now how to be. Because when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, our eternal life with God starts right then at that moment. So we have victory on this side of heaven too, on this side of a physical natural death. And once, when that happens at that time, we have, it continues on to eternal life in heaven with God. 
Now, there are all other eschatological things that people want to try to put in there. But the thing is, accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's the foundation. That's the basic. That's the essence. That's it right there. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior so that you can be counted as a child of God. The fruit of this, of Jesus' sacrifice, of all that he did, he did it for you. He did it for us. He did it for you. You know me. Here we go. Make it personal. Jesus died for me. Jesus rose for me. Make it personal. God loves you and still does, loves you so much that way back then he set everything in order. Knowing that you would be born, knowing there would be challenges, knowing we would make mistakes and sometimes flat out sin, knowing all of that. But he still loves us enough that he set up a system for us to be able to come out from under the control and jurisdiction of Satan and come into the presence of God and under his control and leading, but not control as in locked down. You can't do anything, can't have any fun. That's it for you. Just sit back with you know, just do nothing. Life is over. No control, meaning he can lead you to the, to the places he established for you to prosper and to do well and to serve him and to help expand his kingdom. Let's pray. If you, ex if you at this moment realize that you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and savior, or you wish to return to him and dedicate your life to him, let's pray. Just repeat after me. Father God, I believe Jesus is your son and that you sent him for my sins. And I thank you for that. I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to forgive me for my sins. Lord God, I make you, Lord Jesus, I make you the Lord of my life. Come into my heart. I thank you, Father, for eternal life, now having eternal life with you. In Jesus Christ, amen. Now, it doesn't just stop there. Yes, the salvation part, that's it. And in the discipleship part, and you know I have the messages and, um, oh, if you pray that prayer and it's your first time or the first time that you may have meant it for real, <laughs> that happened to me, um, send us an email and let us know so that we can celebrate with you and with all of heaven that you have come into the family, come into the fold of Jesus Christ, the family of God. Now, now do as Mary was instructed by Jesus. Go tell it. Share the love of God with others. Tell them that Jesus is alive. Tell them that the benefits are real. They're intact and active and available to all God's children. Go tell it. Go tell it. Go tell it. Go tell them that they don't have to be upset and, and worried and not knowing what's going to happen. Tell them that the love of God is available. Tell them that salvation is still there. Tell them that Jesus is alive and interceding for them. Go tell it. Go tell it. Go tell it. I guess the title of this could have been Go Tell It, right? Anywho, Jesus is alive. He has risen. He did it for us. He did it for you. Praise God. Welcome to the family. I'm believing you prayed that prayer. And there are so much more to learn of God, about him. And there's so much he wants to reveal of himself to you. Don't sell him short. There's something new for in him. And then life really starts once we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Watch. Just watch it. Watch it. Go tell it. Praise God. That's all I have for today. Celebrate. Celebrate. Jesus is alive. He has risen. He did it for us. He did it for you. Praise God. Bye-bye.